Good morning, everybody. It's Dr. Zem Moffitt here speaking from Glasgow, and I have my friends and fellow declutterers, Clara Moore of Joy of Space and Elaine McKinley of Clear Mountain. And um, we know of ourselves as the uh, Glasgow's decluttering dream team, and we're here with our working mugs because we are working this morning. Um, so we've come up with this kind of odd idea to have a kind of live show. We think it's a very interesting time for everybody, um, how we make home in this period of lockdown. Um, and so, well, we'll just kick the ball rolling. So people can text us in with questions or they can message us on Facebook. Um, and we'll try and answer your questions. Um, so the first question that I have comes from um, someone down south, a friend down south, and she says, here's a question for your clutter talk. How do you begin? As in, I thought for around a couple of years, I ought to have a major declutter. And when lockdown was announced, I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to do this. Only, it turns out I have been busier than ever during this period and still haven't found time to squeeze it in to my busy schedule. So have you got any tips to finally start? And so I'm gonna first ask this of Clara. Okay, hi. So I would say there's no good time to start. Just start and choose something, an, an easy win. So a small achievable goal, something that perhaps will help you start your day. Maybe your phone chargers, maybe your spare phone charger, you can't remember where you put it. So you want to target a small, easy win. So looking for that and deciding where you're gonna keep them going forward, or perhaps you've got a drawer that you know there's paperwork in that you need. So start with the drawer a small easy win and that will help your motivation and just start and if it's hard to start if you have a track a tune or music that you already exercise to put that on to get you in the mood elaine do you have any thoughts on it yeah i would agree with clara i would agree with clara um what i would say and what i say to a lot of people is to start with a five minute declutter um and tag it on to a habit that you already have so for example you are making a cup of tea and we're making lots of cup of teas cup of tea at the morning this morning so uh, at that point while the kettle is boiling why not do a wee five minute declutter of the area around the kettle? That might be where you store all the uh, tea bags or coffee, etc. Have a little look there. See if you can get rid of a few things uh, from that area. So my key point is to tag it on to a habit that you already have. Clara. Yes. You agree? <laughs> I we're all experiment. We're all experimenting with new um, body language uh, on this um, sort of Zoom application, to, so we're not interrupting each other um, with our sound. Um, so this means thumbs up with agree each with each other, and this, I think, means I have a point to make. <laughs> Can I interject? <laughs> so I would say as well with Elaine's very good point. Also. If you're tagging it onto a habit you already have, then reward yourself afterwards. So think, I'm going to do this five or 10 minutes. And then afterwards, I'll have, well, if you've already had a cup of tea, maybe not the cup of tea, but I'll, I'll make that phone call or send that text or have that interaction. Even if I'm self-isolating alone, I'll treat myself to something that feels good. I would say that reward is key. Yeah. It's the motivation that keeps you moving to the next challenge that you would have. So start at five minutes. Nobody's saying you could do a big declutter, uh, you know, the first time you try. Start with five minutes. Do that five minutes. Reward yourself for that. You've done well. You've achieved something. 
And I think I like the idea of kind of building on current habits. I think that's kind of a very good thing to do. Um, and rewards and also accountability can work very well. So you could join in with a group of friends um, and say, right, I'm going to do five minutes a day and create a little group. And you could give yourself a thumbs up when you've done that five minutes. Um, and I run a, um, a group called Clutter Chat, which is a motivational support group here in Glasgow. And we've gone on to Zoom as well now. And they speak a lot about just 15 minutes a day, actually more than five minutes. Um, but if they can just do 15 minutes a day, um, and I say you can't eat an elephant in one mouthful, in one bite, you've got to take it bit by bit. But over time, you see the progress and it's about making it not overwhelming, but just biting away just a little bit at a time. So you don't get indigestion and you don't get overwhelmed. <laughs> and stop whilst you're still, that's a very good point, Zem, and stop whilst you're still, if not initially enjoying it, stop whilst you still feel motivated. It's like going to a party, leave while you're still having fun. Don't let it tip over into feeling overwhelming or exhausting. So stop at the point before you're ready to. Elaine. That's the, the key, that's the key to keeping you motivated and focused because quite what a lot of people try to do is they try to stay on a task for too long so they lose focus and then they get bored and then they think mm, I don't really want to do that again so by putting it into bite-sized chunks and then you feel energized the next day to do it for maybe you know 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes so it's the focus that people uh, lose when they start decluttering so Clara's point is very valid in that, um, you know, make sure that you, you keep yourself focused in that area. Yeah. And work with your natural biorhythms. Morning's a great time to start for a lot of people, but if for whatever reason you're not a morning person, that might not be your best time. So work with the, your natural rhythms. I know we spoke about there's no good time to start, but there'll be a particular time that's better than others for yourself. And for me personally, I don't declutter or tidy or organize late at night. Once it hits nine o'clock, my body wants to relax. So if I start to organize and my brain starts to get busy, that's gonna affect my sleep. So work out what's better for you and go with that. I have a point ladies. Um... I don't know if it's coming up on our live stream Facebook yet. Okay. Um, so I'm wondering if we can check somehow. Um, it says live on Facebook in my uh, on my screen. Oh, does it? Could you yeah. just have a quick check and okay. see how it's coming up? Because I can't. I uh, I can look on my phone. Y yeah. Okay. Everyone, this is all an experiment, so we appreciate any feedback. And um, if this is going live, then that's great. And um, I'm going to tell you the text phone number. So if you have any questions, you can text Clutter Talk. It's going on brilliant. So you can text Clutter Talk on 077 265 30217. So again, you can text in Clutter Talk at 077-265-30217 or you can message somehow I'm, I'm trying to work on several devices um in fact i've got four i think um going on here um but hopefully one of your messages it will get through somehow um we're also concerned that people without facebook accounts can also hear us and ask questions and i think but i would like clarity as to if you just put in um, slash zamira.moffit, you can watch without needing a Facebook account. Um, if that's not happening, um, then we might consider moving to YouTube or something. Um, but thank you everyone for your um, patience and understanding in this really creative enterprise, which I'm really excited about because I love talking to my friends, Clara and Elaine. We have so much fun and um, I think we think we've got really interesting things to say on the subject of being at home. Um, but 
all feedback is really, really appreciated. And I think the question that we started off with was how, how do we start? And I know for a lot of people that I know that they've had this, they wanted to declutter for so long and now they've got the time, they've got no excuses. So how do you motivate yourself? And Elaine is our supreme motivator, motivational coach. And she also um, runs, um, she can do online motivation for people. So do get in touch with Elaine at um, Clear Mountain. Um, you can find her somehow or on her website, email, something like that. Um, but she's the, your prime person for motivation. And Clara is your prime person for the Marie Kondo technique for simplifying, for valuing everything you have. Um, so Clara, you had a point, I think, or were you thumbs up? No, I was thumbs up. He was thumbs up. <laughs> Maybe Clara, you can start telling us a little bit about how you really start valuing, like tell us about it, you know, we're all, met most of us are now kind of locked down. We're in this home, which we may or may not have loved before, but we're here for the long run now. So how do we start enjoying ourselves as much as possible at home? So thinking about what your vision for your home is and for yourself and thinking about what your habits are currently, what your habits have been in the past that have led you to where you are now and where what you would like your habits to be going forward because a lot of times life is so busy that we just have our head down and get on with life and it's only now that we've been on lockdown for a couple of weeks that we're really being confronted with how our habits have affected our life i know that i'm seeing quite a mirror of my parenting i'm a single parent and I thought I was quite a calm single parent. Well, I can tell you with a couple of weeks of the kids wrecking the house, burning holes in the flooring and goodness knows what they're getting up to. I'm less calm than I thought I was. So that being the case for me, for my home to feel more calm, I'm wanting to do more yoga, more mindfulness, more conversations with children about what family rules are about respecting ourselves respecting our homes what that means to us particularly as a family for you it might be that you've suddenly got time to look at how much you have in your home how you're using your home are the things that you have in your home things that you love is it inherited clutter is it your own clutter and you're sharing your space with a lot more people a lot of the time if you're if you're a person that that perhaps your partners come to live with you where you both had separate homes <laughs> oh, excuse me that was the <laughs> I love it. <laughs> crazy puppy <laughs> so it's um, thinking about that and how you fit that into your day um sorry I was I got a wee bit derailed there <laughs> So what, what sparks joy for you? What is functional for you or something that, um, I mean, this dog sparks joy for me. He's, he brings a lot more work into my life. Uh, and what is not useful for you in your life? And through looking at what we value, that is caring for ourselves, caring for our home. It's, it's a deeper sense of self-care and connection to ourself and our life. Elaine. On that note, I on that note, I would say that um, another thing that we are probably all experiencing is how much space each of us need in our home around us, our own personal space. Uh, sometimes that um, because we're moving in and out of the house very quickly, that we're not all sitting in the same room at the same time or working in the kitchen at the same time or things like that. So this is a really great opportunity to look at the space around us and really evaluating how much space we have and how much more space we could create. Because as we know, the space and the environment that we live in helps us to keep a clear mind. So there, we become more 
uh, productive and we're clearer thinkers and sometimes in some cases much calmer. So in my situation, there's only my husband and I in the house now as our boys are, are older um, and we've had to adapt our space for two people working in the home. So we've designated a workspace for each of us. And in fact, the other day when I was on another big Zoom call, my husband photobombed me by coming into the kitchen as I was working in the kitchen uh, and made a cup of tea. So it's very interesting how we are using our space at the moment. So it's like looking, um, and we often talk it on our course at the University of Strathclyde about looking at the rooms that we live in uh, through a different lens. And this is what's happening at the moment. We are actually looking at our living and uh, surroundings in a different way. And I think it's also about how we're interacting outside of our home. For all that we're on lockdown, we are still going out into our gardens. We are still getting fresh air. And I know that for me, I've been putting off doing gardening for a year and a half. So I've spent time doing my garden, which is lovely because I feel more connected to my home. And I've had small interactions that have brought me great joy. For example, one of my older neighbors, a couple, their daughter was handing shopping to them from a safe distance. And I heard them, I was chatting to her, asking her how she was, and I heard her saying, to her, her parents, oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't get you that big bar of Cadbury's chocolate, so I got you this. And them saying, oh, but we really wanted that. So when I went out to do my weekly shop, I saw a big bar of Cadbury chocolate and I bought it and handed it, knocked on their door and left it from a safe distance and said, oh, I, I overheard, here you are. And they were so delighted. And yesterday I went to my front door to open it in the morning and they'd left Cadbury's Easter eggs for us and it was just such a lovely moment so it's thinking about how you can feel connected within the confines. I've seen on Facebook people, children writing letters to their elderly neighbours that they're thinking about them, you know just how can you feel connected in your community as well. Um, I have a point, we just got a text um, from someone saying enjoying the chat on um, on Facebook, but can't make a comment on Facebook. Um, so I just said, well, text through a comment. Um, hopefully it's positive <laughs> and um, I can read it out. If it's not positive, actually, you can just <laughs> keep it to yourself. <laughs> um, but yeah, all comments are and questions are, are really welcome. So um, I asked in my groups yesterday on Zoom, which is amazing. Um, uh, I'm not publicizing Zoom in any way, but I realize I just did. Um, um, like what questions or what topics they'd like us to cover. And um, one thing that sat with one of the ladies was um, actually when, like how you start loving your home. And for her, it was starting to polish and make things shine. You know, so whether it was her mirror or her cutlery or the kitchen sink, um, the tiles. And what you'll find is, and she was inspired by the idea of bringing light in. So how you bring light and nature and love into your home. And you can do that with your sort of shiny objects. You can just give them a nice polish and all of a sudden you'll have light reflecting. Um, and you can also bring it if you wanted, you can make it a habit. So you can do a kind of a weekly shine. And it's, it's not about, being kind of overly proud or overly posh or overly it's it's just about enjoying what you have and um and just and it's a wonderful spring time of year you know and just being able to um notice um and to enjoy what you're noticing um so she wanted me to share that with everybody um that one thing that really makes a difference for her is just having nice making the things in her home sparkle with joy which is um clara's um thing joy of space so how we how we joyfully um kind of live in our space elaine has a point go elaine uh, i've had a text there could you please uh say the text number again for the people who are wanting to 
uh, who are joining us and I actually wanted to take part. So that's great news. Excellent. So the text number is, um, can, can one of you ladies like put it on your Facebook page or something like that and I'll read it. It's zero or maybe I could write it down as well and show it up on the screen. That's a good idea, isn't it? Um, so we have a bit of paper and I will read it. Zero seven seven two six five three zero two one seven. So that's zero seven seven two six five three zero two one seven and it, it's an old school mobile <laughs> 10 years old um so um it just takes text um so please don't send me any emojis or visuals thank you very much yes, i go. have a i have a question here which uh, one of my um clients have sent in um and it is um, where do you take things at the moment because we've got nowhere to declutter them to? Really good question and that's one that's come up. So both our charity shops and um, we can't take those in and for many of us our recycling dumps are well they're all shut and the local authorities are only picking up like generic waste they're not doing food waste and some aren't doing recycling either. Clara has some thoughts. I was talking about that recently as well. And what you can do, for example, um, a friend of mine posted on Facebook that they had their flat had suffered from a fire and they'd lost their, their family safe, but they'd lost their belongings. So in that way, I sent out a message saying if anybody has any things they want to declutter, that these are the, the items that are being looked for. And so that was one way where things could be moved forward for someone very gratefully receiving them. So you can post on FreeCycle or you can post on Facebook. I have these items. If you want financial remuneration, you can arrange to have a bank transfer and leave them at your garden gate or your front door at a safe distance and people can pick them up or you can offer them for free. If you have a local Facebook page, um, then you can put it on that, uh, a local WhatsApp group, a school WhatsApp group. On my children's school WhatsApp group, there's been some offers of things to be shared. You can have an action area or station in your home where you put designated items that you've made a decision on that you can move forward when the lockdown when it, it, it lets up when that will be we don't know um so also there might be other areas tesco's usually have an area where you can donate books my local corner shop you can donate books so there are still you can still trickle out items that will bring other people great joy. Elaine. Uh, I would say I would say probably just be careful that you're not traveling too far or taking anything to anybody who's vulnerable. I have a few clients who are in the vulnerable category and are really, really worried about any items coming into their home. So it's just being mindful about what's moving around and how far it's going, etc. Um, another thing which we don't normally recommend <laughs> um, is to possibly pop some things in your car. I tend not to want people to do that, but this is something that maybe if the car's not moving out the driveway anyway um, and the boot's clear, possibly a couple of charity bags, etc., things like that might go into that. I want to stress that one of our missions is not to get people to declutter from the house into the car, but this is, we're, un, we're in difficult circumstances at the moment. So if you are short of space, it might be an option, a short term sort of option till we can get back to taking things elsewhere. But I would encourage you not to travel too far. Um, and as Clara said, use your, 
if you want to, to use your local community, but be mindful of who you are taking or passing the things on to, as we don't want anything to spread in, in that sort of sense. I have some, a couple of things to add. Um, so I think one thing from my perspective is that you'll be surprised how much space you can create just by tidying and sorting. And you can get ready for things to go to charity shop or to go away. And what's important is um, thinking about the destination of the objects. Where, where could they go? Where might they enjoy a, a better life um, than on your floor? Um, so you can just organize and sort them. And that is actually a lot of the work. So if you do that, then when the charity shops are open, when your vulnerable friends are ready to receive, then you're ready to give and to take. Um, another thing on the um, on what we do with all our waste now, um, in, in we, I don't know, are we gonna have more waste or less waste? Because we're at home and we're disposing of stuff and yet we're possibly consuming less, certainly less packaging. So it's gonna be interesting how it weighs up in terms of how much we're disposing of in landfill. Um, but one thing is that some councils are recommending for those with gardens is to create a compost heap. Um, and one of my um, good friends, a member of um, Clutter Chat, she's very keen on wormeries. And wormeries are a great way of breaking down your vegetable matter. And it's very quick. And um, so if you have space to um, invest or to buy a wormery, um, they're quite fun as well for kids. Um, and it also means that when we get to the other side of this, then we have other ways, other inventive, creative ways of dealing with um, our waste. Um, we have a, can I read a, a text through? Is that all right, ladies? Okay, so this is a text and it says, I like Clara's comment on working with your own biorhythms. I'm a morning person, but had always started clutter clearing in the afternoon. We'll tackle it in the morning now exclamation mark i like the idea of joyful space too and that's from um she's texted her name but maybe i would i'd like people to let me know if they want me to read out their name so i'm not going to say her name she'll know who she is um but if you want me to if you're happy for us to share your name that's always nice but not necessary um so yeah joy of space clara yeah and biorhythms that's that's great to hear that you're recognizing you're a morning person i'm a fellow morning person too so mornings are always best for me just to add on to thank you for your comment just to add on to what zem was talking about in this time where we're all thinking about finances as well whether we're self-employed or whether we whether we work for a company what, what we can do is look at what we have in our homes. For example, I wanted, like the client, the person that Zem was speaking about earlier, I like light in my home. I want my windows to sparkle. I don't want to be spending lots of money. I don't want to be consuming lots. So things that I had decluttered, an old bed sheet, an old flannelette bed sheet, I cut up and to use as cloths. I was also actually thinking of, we have some... Uh, pens that you can draw on fabric and I was thinking of getting the kids to do their own napkins so using them as napkins rather than kitchen towels because I don't use kitchen towels ordinarily but I got caught up with my mum saying you must get kitchen towels so now I have three lots of kitchen towels which I kind of feel bad about which I think I might donate to the food bank the next time I'm in the supermarket but a bottle of vinegar dilute diluted in water in a spray it can be an old spray from a bottle you already have used up you don't need to go out and buy a new spray bottle using that on the window with old t-shirts or old bedding cut into scraps and shining it up with old newspapers beautiful sparkling windows so repurposing what you have is another way to use things you're decluttering I'm going to make bunting for my back garden to cheer myself and my neighbours up and it's also going to be a small mindful task, cleaning the windows, making the bunting that will be a calm thing. My hands will be busy, my mind can relax. So thinking about how you can repurpose your items that you're decluttering. Elaine. Yeah, I think, I 
I think that Clara has a very good point there about looking at what we actually have in our homes and how we can use them in different ways. And one of the great things uh, which I say to clients is when we are decluttering our kitchen and we are looking at all our plastic and our Tupperware that don't have lids, um, these can be used in drawers elsewhere to, to separate bits and pieces. So there are many different things actually in our homes just now that we can use to for sorting. And it's great, you know, a great idea for the kids as well that, you know, if you get all that plastic out of the, the cupboard and we have a look and then the kids, you know, are looking for the lids that go with the bits of plastic. That's a sorting exercise. It's educational as well. And then look at how we could fit them into drawers to make different compartments in drawers to hold our batteries, to hold, uh, you know, safety pins, all these different things. The children uh, and everybody in the family can get involved in this process. And often we come across uh, clients who say, I want you to come in, but I don't know if the family are on board. Well, this is the time to everybody get together and everybody have a chat about how we can make our own living environment be really nice and work well for everyone. So those 25 mugs in the cupboard, well, maybe they are not so good in that cupboard. You know, we've what we've done actually the other day was we went for the bigger mugs and thought, actually, do we need them? So I've actually put herbs in those mugs and they're actually sitting on the windowsill just now. Um, and they've got a handle, so it's easy to hold and to, to fill up with the water. The water's contained in it. The, the herbs are growing out of it. I've repurposed the mugs. So think in a different way is my key. Have a look at what you've got. Have a look at how you could use it in a different way. Sam. Thank you. I think that's um, a really good um, thing. It's about accessing, um, allowing our creativity to come through and accessing it. And this is kind of a really ideal opportunity to start kind of just playing with that kind of inner creative spirit that we all have that for some of us has been maybe quite neglected <laughs> for quite a long time um, and presents a challenge. I have um, Another question um, that has kind of come through from the groups, but first I'd like to say, um, welcome to people who are just joining us. Um, this is, I am Dr. Zen Moffitt and I'm with Clara Moore and Elaine McKinley. Clara Moore of Joy of Space and Elaine McKinley of Clear Mountain. You can find us all online, give everybody a wave. Um, Clara is your expert in the Marie Kondo technique and Elaine McKinley is your key motivational <laughs> person. And so Elaine does online coaching. Clara's got a new YouTube channel and we'll be doing this. I think, are we gonna keep doing this um, ladies? So we'll do this every Wednesday um, from 11 a.m. for about 45 minutes. We'll see how long we can keep going for. Um, and um, if anyone has a question, um, then you can either message in, we've got all, lots of different devices going, um, so we should be able to catch them, or you can text through to 077-265-30217. That's 07-265-30217. And it comes through to an old school telephone. Um, so um, no emojis or anything like that. Um, but we're really enjoying this. So the question um, that I'd like to put to kind of Clara and Elaine now is one of the things that's been happening, and Clara, you just touched on it, was this kind of fear and kind of overconsumption. So people have gone out and bought, you know, classically lots of toilet rolls or hand sanitizer and all that. And then now what I'm realizing is that in the group that I host, Clutter Chat, they're like, what do we do with all this stuff we bought? Because <laughs> it's now piling up. So do you ladies have any solutions for th that kind of recognition also that actually we've just gone and bought too much um, and feel slightly guilty um, because we know also that there are people with nothing who can't get to this stuff. So are there ideas in this lockdown of what we can do to make this stuff useful and um, yeah, to almost alleviate our conscience a little bit. Clara. You can, of course, the initial one is the food bank donation in the supermarket. If you are going out to do a, a week 
particularly shop, then you can drop off there. But you can also contact people in vulnerable people in your local community. Uh, keep it as narrow or wide as you want. You can put notes through people's doors saying, I have excess of such and such. Would you, I'd be happy to give that to you. Would you like it? Or you can post it on a Facebook page. Um, for all those people at home, home educating, and feeling the stress of, of that on top of, of dealing with everything else, you can use items to as part of a home education. Uh, for example, making, I'm a child of the 70s, so we played secretaries, we played food shops, we played all of, we made all, we didn't have all the computer games and everything that we have now. So my children, we're using the recycling and some of the tins we have, and we're making a shop. And that's taking into account with the stickers, adding up, subtract, subtracting, writing, reading, list making, turn taking. So you can bring it into what's happening in your life as well, because home education doesn't have to be buying lots of different apps or stressing yourself with trying to do a teacher's job on top of everything else. It can be fun. You can bring aspects of your own childhood in. So sorry, that was a slight tangent. So Elaine. I think um I think in our job as professional organizers, sometimes we come across people who in the past have had hoarding tend, what we call hoarding tendencies, where they do what quite a lot of people did um, when this all first started and buy in a lot of things uh, in, in the hope that they will get to use, to use them. But I think uh, anybody who recognizes themselves as someone possibly in that category, will understand that the, the action of buying in too much stuff means that we shove it to the back of a cupboard and then we never actually get to use it. Um, and then the food goes off or they don't know they had it and all these sort of um, things that go with that. So I think it's quite an interesting one uh, psychologically for us to think now, I don't really need that. I just need what I need for this week. Um, there's plenty of food in the shops. There's plenty of things for me to get. Um, so I don't need to buy in too much because where am I going to store it? And this is where the next problem comes and Zen touched on that. Where do I store all this stuff that I've bought in, this extra stuff that I've bought in? Um, and one of the key things is that by clearing out um, our cupboards um, in a decluttering project, it will free up space. It will free up space. And this is where you get the opportunity to use your cupboards uh, in a really productive way by looking at how you're going to arrange your cupboard. How are we going to do things? Are we going to put things in date order? Are we going to keep like with like, all the tins together, all the, the dried foods together? This is a great opportunity for us to look at that. And what this does is it helps us in the future when this is all over to manage how we uh, look at storing foods or other items. Um, because a lot of people that we go into, um, have bought a lot of stuff and then by the time we've gone in they're out of date and we're having to look at ways of you know getting rid of especially food stuff safely um and so it's, it's it, this can be a really good exercise or preparation for how we will live our life in the future same thank you elaine and I also think that for many of the people who I work with, um, they actually love order. They love it and it really upsets them that their home isn't in order. And so now they're loving the fact that they have the time to create those lists, to write everything. You know, they enjoy having a cupboard with a list on it saying what's in it. You know, they enjoy that, that, that categorization, the boxing. So this is your time to really kind of give yourself to get those CDs in a beautiful um, collection, how you just want them to look, get those cables all tied up and sorted just so that it satisfies you. Um, 
and um, sort of organize your book so that so that they give you joy and then as Elaine says then after after that then you know things that you may want to let go of can go but this is people who I've been working with you know just like this is this is lovely I finally have the time to be able to have the order as I want it and it's as you want it not as someone you know not as the magazines tell you you should have it not as this it's you no know, no what makes sense in your head um and that's important well we have another text through ladies can I read it mm -hmm. um so um this person says thanks for giving the number again um physically any amount of decluttering is hard for me on my own um, and I, I hear that I work with um, a couple of clients who it, it's just very impossible for them without someone else there with the, um, the physical support. So I'm, I'm hearing you there. Um, so this person is self-isolating due to chronic ill health and she, uh, they live on their own, um, feeling even more demotivated than usual. Um, but they say, having listened to this, they're now going to reach out um, and try and get someone to else to remove items anyway. At least they can do that. And lastly, thank you. Um, she says, I've needed this. I've needed this. So, um, so we're, we're truly glad um, and glad that you're watching us and that um, thank you to all the tech firms that have enabled this to happen. And I'm really glad that the force was with me to, to press the right buttons. So uh, <laughs> thank you. But yeah, lovely text. That's, that's fabulous feedback and thanks for whoever sent that in. And we come across a lot of people in your situation who physically cannot do the decluttering themselves. They have the, the will, but, but not really the, the, the energy uh, to do that. And it is okay to reach out. It is okay. We are here and there are lots of... Uh, professional organizers. We are members of ABTO, the Association of Professional Declutterers and Organizers. And um, you can pop on to the website and you can see um, regional organizers in your area, pop in your postcode and uh, people come up. The other thing is, the good thing is they have what we all specialize in. As you can see here, the three of us all specialize in something a little bit different, but we work very collaboratively together. So um, if you phoned me and I thought you wanted something, someone to help you spark joy, I would be telling you to go to Clara. Or if you felt that you needed some support, ongoing support, I would be saying, well, go to Zem, who is uh, running her clutter chat every week. Um, so please don't feel uh, bad about reaching out. We want you to reach out. We are all here um, with any questions or any help that we can you know, provide for you now and also in the future. So well done if you take that challenge to, to, to reach out and actually ask for some help. Clara. Uh, can I just have a, a, a point of organization question? Um, I'm just looking at the time. I'm really enjoying the chat. We have a couple more texts through. Are you ladies happy to go on for another 10 minutes or so? Yeah, yeah. yeah? is that okay? Yeah. Right, you're on, Clara. Oh, okay. So I was going to say wonderful points they are made by Elaine and whether we're people that have lots of energy or not much energy, whether we're in our homes alone just now or whether we've got children with us or a partner, it's a time of great change. It's a time of great uncertainty. And that is hard. It's very, very hard. Be gentle with yourself. Be kind to yourself. And if you need to just speak to somebody, phone somebody, or text them, but reach out and connect with people because this is a hard time. Elaine, Zem and I all are feeling the effects of it as well. Yes, we do this as our, as our work, as our passion, but not every day is great for us. Some days are better than others. Some days you feel okay and some days you feel not great. So be kind to yourself, have self-care. We're all we're all going through feelings of uncertainty, of high and low emotions, and be kind, be kind to yourself. That's what I was going to say. 
I completely agree. So shall I read this um, text through? Um, enjoying the live stream on Facebook. I'm so glad it works. I was quite insecure. Um, can you please expand on action area concept? Action area concept. So when you've made the initial decision that this is something that you're happy to let go of, and primarily what you're focusing on is what you want to keep can you take Louie down please darling I do borrow my dog and the borrow my dog person is here to borrow Louie the puppy uh, so when you're um, focused focus on what you want to keep and why you want to keep it and where you want to keep it that's your primary goal the things that you're not keeping then make a decision about that you can have decision fatigue and when we're working with clients, it's not tiring for us because we are not connected to the, the people's belongings in the same way. We don't have the history to those belongings, but you can become very tired, have decision fatigue. So make things easier for yourself. Make that decision. Don't put it off because your brain doesn't like decisions that are left undecided sorry that's not the best word but make it easier for yourself to decide okay I have these clothes when when I'm able to get out when the lockdown lets up a bit no I'm busy darling that's very nice but I'm busy not just now oh sorry we've got presents um from the bottom of my dog, Easter presents, which is lovely. And a card and some chocolate. So that's what I need. There you go, guys. You can take those. Really? Yes, off Wait, you go. No, I'm busy. I'm talking. I'm so sorry. That's fine. Just just um can we just ask them for another five minutes of mummy's time? So the action stations. Make your decision if you need to write it down so you've got a running list and have an area, whether it's your car, whether it's a shed, whether it's a cupboard and put your items there and then your brain can relax and let go of that. We, we might be living uh, in spaces that are smaller, so definitely don't buy any storage solutions. That's going to create more clutter. First of all, look at what you have and decide what you're doing with what you have. Elaine. And on, on that point that, that Clara has, has made there, uh, one of the key things that we like to say to our clients is that if you set a time limit for what you're going to be doing, then you become more focused in that time. We're going back to being focused again. Um, and as Clara says, you do get dis decision fatigue. So if you stick to a specific time, you've chosen your area, then you, you sit, stick to a specific time and put a tooth back in there, um, <laughs> then it's much easier to manage. A, you don't get as tired and B, you make better decisions. So once you've designated an area, Set yourself a time, stick to that area, and when you've done it, rejoice in the fact you've done it and go away and do something else for the rest of the day. Zem. We have a text through and it says, Elaine's idea of using little boxes to start, um, little boxes to sort drawers has made such a huge difference to me. Wow. So little boxes. So I think that's the idea of having, yeah, like small boxes um, that you then put in drawers um, to, and then you can put your socks in or your pants or pens and it's kind of makes little internal dividers in a drawer. Am I right, ladies? Yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly what happens. It, it's, it makes little segments and you can use it for in any types of drawers, uh, you know, in your home office. It's great for paper clips, etc. things like that. In the kitchen, it can be good for, uh, I'm trying to think of something that's really good that we've got. Oh yeah, like the, the little things that you put in the corn and the cobs, you know, those wee things, they always seem to get lost somewhere. Um, so we've got a little section where we put them. Uh, up the stairs in the bedroom, we've got a little section for socks scarves that's your question jewelry. do you ever actually use those corn on the cob things like i've had them and like I'd, I, and then i've just given up i mean do you actually use them elaine 
Of course I use them then. <laughs> if I didn't use them, then they wouldn't be a useful object. So I would be moving them on. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> many, uh, many would believe you. Right. Um, so we have um, one last question. Um, if I can work my little phone again. Um, which is, this is a tricky one and try and keep your answers sort of short and sweet. What are some tips to including people in the household who are resistant in the organizing decluttering process? How do you deal with resistant people? Clara, you might have some really good tips. Yeah, if you lead by example, it has a ripple effect. But if you ask, if you, if you ask the people that you're sharing your home with, to contribute to things that they actually enjoy doing, then you can build upon that once those habits are in place. For example, my daughter loves squishing, uh, cleaning the surfaces in the kitchen and the bathroom, but hates hoovering. So work out what you want to do yourself. Be fair about how tasks are split around the home but be also mindful of what people actually enjoy doing because we're far more willing to contribute if we're doing something we enjoy and it's how we're asking the people as well if we invite people then they're more willing to do something if Elaine, Elaine. Uh, I would agree with Clara and I think um, we've all found that the ripple effect when you clear one area and then there's been a resistance normally in the family and then that person may come in and see the difference in that area, it then makes people think in a different way and they think well actually maybe I could clear a bit of my space and then it goes to a bit bigger and then a bit bigger and a bit bigger. So. Uh, I think you will find that the ripple effect will kick in, especially if you're all in the same home at the same time just now. Um, and just the, we're really emphasizing that the clear space makes for a clear mind, which makes for clear decisions and clearer perspective on everything that's happening. Um, and energizes us, energizes us. The, the air flowing around the room, uh, you know, it's exactly what we need, especially with this being a respiratory thing. We need the air to flow around your rooms. We need to be breathing in nice, clean air in order to mm. energize us and our minds. Um, and I was telling the girls this morning, I did a fantastic mindfulness uh, session with my mindfulness teacher. And it was amazing this morning and I feel great. So really take time to think about what's lying about the home what surfaces can be cleaned a bit better just to let the air flow and get us healthy, get us all healthy. And if, if we're used, if we're looking at the rooms in our house and are they able to be used for the purpose that they're designated for? And if, for example, we have a really cluttered kitchen, then set, set a task that's easy and get everybody involved. So perhaps your kitchen's really cluttered, then concentrate on one bit of workspace becoming clear and an area of the table becoming clear so that you can prepare food easily, so that you can eat healthier, so that you can sit together to have a meal. And as you find your house becoming calmer and more organized, you'll get on better together and the quality of your sleep will improve. And that's another key thing at this time is for our immune systems, for us to be able to switch off, rest at night and replenish and keep our immune systems strong. Well, I think those are some lovely um, points to end on. Um, so we have, we did have another text about paperwork, um, but to be fair, that is such a big topic. We can't um, address it, I don't think, in the next 60 seconds. Um, but if you have other questions like that, and it can't wait until next week, um, then please do feel free to get in touch with one of us. Um, you can have a kind of an online coaching session with Elaine or um, text us in again next week um, for Clutter Talk. 
I really um, enjoyed myself and I am so glad it's worked. I'm so glad that you guys have been able to see it on Facebook. So I will post on my page about where you can watch it again if you want to, if you want to share it. I don't even know how long it stays on Facebook, whether it will just stay there or whether we're better off putting it on YouTube, but these will all um, be worked out. Um, so again, we have Clara Moore of Joy of Space. We have Elaine McKinley of Clear Mountain, and we are your decluttering dream team. Well, that's what we, we're kind of maybe a bit egoist. That's what we like to think of ourselves. Um, and so I'd invite, do Clara or Elaine have anything kind of else to say um, before we wrap up, Clara? I was just going to say that what we can do next week is we can have to show you small storage solutions as um, Elaine spoke about. Also, your empty tins that have smooth edges, not serrated edges, they can be used to store children's art supplies, to be stored pens, old coffee jars can be used to store batteries, things that normally get scattered in drawers or through the house. We can give, uh, we can give you demonstrations of that perhaps next week. And Elaine, wrap up for us. Yeah, okay, so just be careful and mindful of what you are touching or decluttering, which is the first thing. Remember that the clearer space gives us a clearer uh, airflow and therefore a clearer mind um, and a more positive perspective on everything that's going on. Um, we are all concerned about what's going on, but if we all work together and take the advice uh, that's been given out to us, we can all get through this together. And we are all here if you want to um, give us a text or you need a phone call or anything like that. I'm just going out now to do some shopping for a client um, because she's in the vulnerable category. So I'm going to glove up, mask up and go and do my shopping. So um, have a good week and hopefully we'll see as many people as we can next week. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a great bye. week. Bye-bye.